lovely seats here, guys. Come on in. Dr. Martin. I'd like to thank the Mantinar Committee for extending to me this invitation to be the keynote speaker at the 39th Annual Manzanar Pilgrimage. I'm particularly indebted for this great honor to three members of the Manzanar Committee, Corey Shiyazaki, Daryl Kunitomi, and Bruce Embry. My most profound debt, however, is to a committee member who could not be with us today except in spirit, and that is the late and indisputably great Sue Kunitomi Embry. In addition to being Daryl's aunt and Bruce's mother, Sue was, of course, a founding member of the Manzanar Committee, as well as the moving force behind and the public face for the Manzanar pilgrimage during the better part of four decades. I wanted to take a moment to point out this book, The Unquiet Nisei, an oral history of the life of Sue Kunitomi Embry, by Diana Myers Barr. It's for sale over at the Interpretive Center uh, today, right after this particular program, and then tomorrow he'll also do it in the afternoon. So there's a, a good opportunity to go over and buy it. Now it's an expensive book, but then the subject of the book is priceless. So it's worth the investment. The main purpose of my presentation, which I've entitled The Manzanar Pilgrimage, redressing America and repairing the USA is to explain why, in my opinion, the historical representation of the topic of the Japanese American redress movement is itself in need of being redressed in one particular respect. The respect that I have in mind is the role played by the Manzanar Committee and the Manzanar Pilgrimage, a role which has previously been grossly slighted not only by historians, but even the Japanese American community. This year, 2008, is a very significant one for all Americans, but especially for those of Japanese ancestry, since it marks the 20th anniversary of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, when on August 10th, 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed into law this piece of legislation he provided thousands of Japanese Americans with an apology and compensation for the violation of their constitutional rights that occurred during World War II when they were victimized by force exclusion and mass incarceration. Throughout the current calendar year, there has been a dizzying number of events sponsored by Japanese American community groups celebrating the achievement of redress 20 years ago. Typically, each of these occasions have paid tribute to select individuals or groups deemed chiefly responsible for the success of redress. In some instances, the heroes of redress are said to be individuals and groups whose actions during World War II were so noble that while not being directly responsible for redress, acted either to inspire it or legitimate it in the eyes of the American public and its elected representatives. Among those in the latter camp are Japanese Americans who served the U.S. cause during the war in three of the most celebrated and decorated units in American military history. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team, the 100th Battalion, and the Military Intelligence Service. Those who see these soldiers as the key enablers of redress argue that the men in these units served with distinction despite the racism, discrimination, and wholesale violation of constitutional rights to which they were subjected. And it was their actions that would ultimately refute any allegations of disloyalty or treason and thus provide the moral and patriotic capital necessary for funding research, redress. On the other hand, the proponents of World War II inspirers of redress point to the actions of specific courageous resistors to their ethnic communities, wholesale oppression by the U.S. government and society. Three individuals whose names are commonly mentioned in this connection 
are Joe Korohara, Kiyoshi Okamoto, and James Amora. All of them Nisei, U.S. citizens of Japanese ancestry. All three of these men, Korohara, Okamoto, and Omura, had during World War II, in addition to their significant dissenting words and actions, taken positive steps to bring about post-war redress and reparations for the wrongs done to them and their community. Most of the attention during this year's 20-year anniversary celebration of Japanese American redress, however, has not focused on wartime actions by individuals or groups. Rather, attention has been riveted upon individuals and groups being lauded for their pivotal role in relation to redress in the period spanning 1970 to 1988. Most often mentioned are the three community-based redress groups, the Japanese American Citizens League, the National Coalition for Redress Reparations, and the National Council for Japanese American Redress. Whereas JACL opted for a presidential commission to investigate the internment, and NCRR focused on grassroots support for congressional legislation for redress and an apology from the U.S. government, NCJAR filed a class action suit which made its way to the Supreme Court. Another group singled out for their central part in the passage of redress is the contingent of Japanese American congressional officials, Daniel Inoue and Spark Matsunaga, U.S. Senators from Hawaii, Norman Mineta and Robert Matsui, Congressman from California, Patricia Saiki, a Congresswoman from Hawaii. Together, it is said, they strategically guided the redress bill through the Senate and the House of Representatives. Still one more group of individuals whose work on behalf of redress has been acclaimed this year consists of the Coram Nobis lawyers who in the 1980s revived the World War II civil rights cases of Minoru Yasui, Gordon Hirabayashi, and Fred Korematsu and thereby helped to set the stage for the redress legislation. Just a few weeks ago, the Japanese American National Museum honored the work of key Nikkei women during the redress movement. Most prominently mentioned was Aiko Herzig Yoshinaga, a World War internee here at Manzanar who was a self-trained archivist who uncovered key documents that led to the vindication of resistors Korematsu, Hirabayashi, and Yasui, as well as other documents that laid a strong basis for the filing of grievance against the government by the Chicago-based National Council for Japanese American Redress, led by William Horry, still another former inmate at Manzanar. Arguably, though, the individual most credited with the success of redress has been Edison Uno, a San Francisco State University professor who in 1970 introduced a resolution calling for redress at a biennial meeting of the Japanese American Citizen League, thus making redress a formal issue.